Battling classic 8-bit home computers against each other can be quite entertaining, especially with a both visually appealing and computationally intense benchmark like displaying the Mandelbrot set. Just recently I've discovered Matt Heffernan's YouTube series on his channel Retrodesk where he does exactly that. He calls it the 8-bit battle royale. And the relaxed style and fun vibe of his videos immediately got me. Contenders for first place are the Commodore 64, the BBC Micro, the ZX Spectrum and, to spice things up, man also includes some modern retro style machines like the Commander X16 and the new Agon Light 2. Even a high performance DIY CPU enters the ring, namely the Gem1 parallel pipeline CPU design of my fellow YouTuber James Sharman, who has also published an 8-bit battle royale video. Links are in the description. Since all the systems differ widely in their graphics capabilities, Matt came up with a kind of smallest common denominator benchmark. As I have understood it, the following rules apply to all competitors. Display the Mandelbrot set by projecting the complex plane from minus 2.5 to 1 times minus i to i onto 32 by 22 pixels. For each pixel calculate a maximum of 15 iterations using integer math operations for fixed point fractional numbers. And it is not allowed to exploit the axial symmetry of the Mandelbrot set. Every pixel has to be calculated ab initio. My first goal today is to re-evaluate Matt's results and add my 50 cents to them. Secondly, as some of you might know, I've also developed a retro-style 8-bit home computer myself, the Minimal 64, the shortest way from TTL to Space Invaders. Entirely built from simple logic chips, it features VGA and PS2 and it is quite a capable machine, available as a free and open design. I'll link to my video series about it down in the description. So definitely the Minimal 64 will have a go at the 8-bit battle royale. And I've got another card up my sleeve. My latest toy, the Minimal UART Ultra. Another simple as possible non-pipeline CPU design, this time maxed out for pure speed. I had quite some fun over the last months, squeezing every possible megahertz clock rate from it and optimizing the heck out of its instruction set. So we'll soon witness two new players in Matt's 8-bit battle royale. But let's start with a look at the current leaderboard. At the tail end we have the Commodore 64, using 26.4 seconds for this castle run. Next comes the ZX Spectrum, with 20.5 seconds. And on first place the BBC Micro, finishing impressively with only 12.7 seconds on the clock. Let us try and make some sense of these results by expanding our table with some more information. I've added a column showing the processor type. We see the 6502-10 and the Z80. For each system the column IPC shows how many instructions are executed per clock cycle. I've taken general values from this Wikipedia page here. These numbers can be considered a first measure of efficiency of a CPU design. But it's important to keep in mind that the IPC count is completely blind to how much computational work a single instruction gets done. A parameter that is certainly also kind of important when judging the efficiency of a CPU. Additionally, the IPC value will vary with the computational task. Anyway, with a grain of salt, let's apply them to Matt's Mandelbrot code. And I'll also compute the inverse of IPC, a value telling us how many clock cycles an instruction takes on average. Interestingly, we see the 6502s dominating the Z80 by almost a factor of 3 in this category. The 6502 combines a partially overlapping pipeline with efficient bus access. Still, the Z80 finishes ahead of the C64 because, you've guessed it, it's the product of efficiency and speed that matters. So I've added another column showing the clock rates. If we multiply the clock rate by the number of instructions per clock, we get the number of instructions per second, usually displayed with a prefix M for million instructions per second, or MIPS. The C64 running at 1 MHz executes 0.43 MIPS, while the Z80 with its 3.5 MHz clock is rated a tad higher at 0.51 MIPS. 
Thus, the Z80's lower IPC count is more than compensated by its higher clock rate. The overall winner, however, is the BBC Micro, since it runs two times faster than the C64 and thus has the highest MIPS rating. Now by multiplying the total runtime by the MIPS value, we get the total number of instructions executed in solving the Mandelbrot task. Just under 11 billion instructions across all platforms. It shouldn't surprise us to see a more or less constant value here, since Matt has ported his assembly code to the various machines with only slight adaptations. And now Matt adds another contender, the recently released Commander X16. The X16 obliterates the classic micros with a result of only 3.2 seconds here. Its processor, essentially a modern 6502, runs at 8 MHz and spits out a whopping 3.44 MIPS. By multiplying with 3.2 seconds, we again obtain around 11 million instructions in total, showing that Matt indeed has ported his benchmark faithfully over to the X16. Things get interesting with the ZX Spectrum getting a second try. Matt optimizes his code to now make full use of the Z80's many registers. Now the Spectrum crosses the finishing line after only 13.5 seconds. Well done, little Specky! By again multiplying with the MIPS value, we see that the new code now only takes 6.85 million instructions to perform the very same benchmark calculations. Indeed, the code has improved quite a bit by making use of the specific advantages the Z80 offers. Now the black belt of 8 bits, the Byte Attics Aegon Lite 2 enters the ring. It features Zilog's modern parallel pipeline version of the Z80, the EZ80, running at 18.4 MHz. It is immediately taking first place, running Matt's optimized Z80 code in only 1.5 seconds. Since we already know that it consists of 6.85 million instructions, we can reversely deduce 4.6 MIPS here and 0.25 instructions per clock. Hmm, at least for this specific benchmark, I cannot confirm the EZ80's marketing statement in the manual saying Xilox EZ80 is capable of executing code four times faster than a standard Z80 operating at the same clock speed, which lets me expect more like 0.58 instructions per clock. Oh well, in real-world applications, overlapping pipelines tend to get blocked by memory access quite a bit. Nevertheless, the Aegon Lite 2 is clearly the fastest machine so far. But buckle up, here comes another interesting contender. James Sharman's custom pipeline CPU Jam 1. James has documented his build in over 100 YouTube videos. Again, the link is in the description. Jam 1, after only 1.3 seconds, finishes first place. James has also measured the number of instructions per clock specifically for his Mandelbrot code, a whopping 0.65 instructions per clock. It's not only the fastest CPU, but also the most efficient of today's leaderboard. If we now again multiply the 1.3 second runtime, we see that Jam 1 only needs 3.38 million instructions to complete the whole benchmark only about a third of Matt's original C64 code. We see that the Jam 1 pipeline is not only highly efficient, but its instruction set, in combination with James's skill, support a significant optimization of the code. Well, that is tough competition. In this shark tank, where does the minimal 64 end up? Let's find out and fire it up. Well, it's 2.8 seconds. Not too bad, little minimal. The minimal 64 CPU is effectively running at 6 MHz, and for this benchmark, it uses 7.65 clocks per instruction, or 0.13 instructions per clock. This is showing a significantly lower efficiency than James's pipeline design, more in the ballpark of the Z80, since it is what it is a simple as possible approach with no overlapping pipelines at all. However, the picture changes a bit when we again calculate the total number of instructions the minimal 64 requires for the task. Only 2.2 million instructions. 
Now, assuming that James has optimized his code in a similar way than I did, it becomes evident that the minimal 64, although each instruction takes many more clock cycles, it gets done more computational work per instruction. The minimal 64 supports many advanced 16-bit calculations. Finally, let's fire up my new minimal UR Ultra CPU. As you can see, it is still a breadboard prototype, but runs reliably at 10 MHz. Uh, to my knowledge, it is the highest clock general purpose breadboard computer ever built from standard 74HC logic. It's not only much faster than the minimal 64, but also packs a higher efficiency without sacrificing its simple as possible approach. I have ported the OS of the minimal 64 over to it. We have a DOS-like file system, as explained in the minimal 64 manual. It comes with its own text editor, a native assembler and my trusted Tetris clone, Blocks. It's almost unplayable at that speed. And here is the source code of the Mandelbrot benchmark. Let's assemble and run. Whoa, that was fast. Let's change for 20 repetitions and get the stopwatch ready. Wow, we get 0.61 seconds. Let us go to our table and try to make sense of this result. For this benchmark, the Ultra uses on average 6.0 clocks per instruction, but only 1.02 million instructions for the whole benchmark. Almost one tenth of Matt's initial code. Why? Well, again, two things at the same time. I have optimized the heck out of the code and many instructions are much more powerful than on the 6502. So with its relatively modest 1.67 MIPS, the Ultra still outperforms all other contenders by a large margin. It is more than a factor of two faster than the second place. We see here that the MIPS reading is kind of unsuitable to compare the computational power of different systems. The MIPS reading is blind to the level of optimization a system does or does not facilitate. I myself find it quite astonishing and counterintuitive to see how a simple as possible brute force high speed CPU design may still outperform highly parallelized modern architectures. Due to their complexity, they may be harder to optimize for speed. But even with Matt's quite well-defined Mandelbrot benchmark, it remains messy to try and disentangle all the factors like pipeline efficiency, instruction efficiency, speed and level of optimization. Let's take it all with a grain of salt here. Whew! If you've made it thus far, thanks a lot for following my funny 8-bit battle royale excursion. I hope you've enjoyed this benchmarking episode as much as I did. As always, you'll find links to my projects and GitHub repos down in the description. If you like, you can take a look at the minimal UR Ultra schematic, instruction set or fire it up as an emulator in full speed mode. The documentation is not yet on the level of my minimal 64 project, but you'll find your way. I might even release it as a PCB design in the future if there's sufficient interest in it. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Take care. Bye.